Welcome to Electron Line. In this example, we have a floor joist and we're trying to find the force on the members between L and K, D and K, and D and E. Notice that there is a load on the entire floor, but we have it drawn as we have it acting on each of the joints B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. Again, just like before, we want to know what the support forces are. And since I'm going to use just the left section here, I would be okay with just finding the force at A. I don't need to find the force at I since I'm not going to use that portion of the floor joist to find the force on the members here. Again, what we do is we find the sum of all the moments. And we're going to do it about point I. So we'll put the pivot point right there. So the moments about point I, they must all add up to zero. And notice that all the loads, except this one right here, do not act through the point of rotation. So I have to take all these into account, not this one. And notice that all of those will cause a counterclockwise motion on this particular structure. If there was no support here, it would push it this way. So we can see the moments are in a counterclockwise direction. That means they're all positive. Starting with the first one, we have a positive one kilonewton and the distance from the line of action of that force all the way to the support point is one, two, three, four, five, six meters plus two kilonewton force multiplied times the distance of five meters plus another two kilonewton force multiplied times a distance of, oop, not five meters now, now we're down to four meters plus a one and a half kilonewton force multiply times three meters, plus a one kilonewton force, multiply times two meters, and plus a one kilonewton force, multiply times one meter. And on top of that, I have this force right here, which is a force acting at A, that will give us a clockwise moment, which is negative, minus force at A, and the distance here, again, would be a total of six meters. Now to solve for F sub A, we move this, this portion over to the other side, becomes positive, we add all those up together, we get F sub A times 6 meters, that will now be positive, equals, we get 6 plus 10, that's 16, well I might as well just add them all up here, so we have 6 kilonewton meters plus 10 kilonewton meters plus 8 kilonewton meters plus 4.5 kilonewton meters plus 2 kilonewton meters and plus 1 kilonewton meter. Now if we divide both sides by 6 meters, we can find the force at A. So the force acting at A is equal to 16, 24, 26, 30 and a half, 31 and a half divided by 6, 31.5 kilonewton meters divided by six meters the meters cancels out and 31.5 divided by six five and a quarter 5.25 kilonewtons we can find the force at i by simply adding them all up subtracting this force the remainder will of course be supported by by i let's do that we have two four five six we have six and a half, seven and a half, eight, nine kilonewtons, subtract 5.25, the remainder will be F sub I. So let me show you just a moment what I just did. So the sum of all the forces in the Y direction equals, we have F sub A plus F at I equals the sum of all the forces, that would be one plus two, that's three, five, six and a half, seven and a half, eight and a half, nine, that would be a total of nine, kilonewtons. Since we know that F sub A is equal to five and a quarter, we get F sub I is equal to nine kilonewtons minus, when I bring this to the other side, 5.25 kilonewtons. And notice that that leaves us with F sub I is equal to 3.75 kilonewtons. Just so that you can see how that can be calculated. But the only one that we really need to know is F sub A, and that's equal to 5.25 kilonewtons. And we can put that over here as being 5.25 kilonewtons. Now we need to find these three unknown forces. 
And uh, let's start off by putting the pivot point over here. Because if I do it there, I can eliminate, eliminate these three forces and I can easily find this force right here. So I'm going to put the pivot point at D. I can then say that the sum of the moments at D is equal to zero. Let's hope I left myself enough room over here. Let's try it. And that leaves me with these two forces. They both give me counterclockwise moments. That would be a, a two kilonewtons multiplied times one meter plus a one kilonewton force multiplied times two meters minus this force right here, F sub A, that would be 5.25 kilonewtons multiplied times, that would also be two meters and I am out of room here. And then finally, I have this final force I'm trying to find, this one right here. So let me just put it like this. And that will give me a counterclockwise torque, that's positive, plus FLK multiplied times the distance. This is a half a meter, 0 0.5 meters. Okay, from that, I should be able to find FLK because I can move everything over to the other side, keep this on one side, so I have F. LK multiplied times 0 0.5 meters is equal to. So what I did was, I'm now moving all this to the other side. This becomes negative. That's minus 2 kilonewton meters. Minus 2 kilonewton meters and plus 10.5 kilonewton meters. Remember, I moved everything over to the other side of the equal sign. So those all change signs. And then finally, FLK is equal to 10.5 minus 4, that's 6.5 kilonewton meters divided by 0 0.5 meters would give me 13 kilonewtons. Hmm, wow, that's a lot. So with the load on the floor joists this way, it looks like there's a lot of force acting on those bottom joists. So 13 kilonewtons is quite a bit of force, and that would be on LK. Notice that it's positive, which means that Drew is in the correct sense, meaning the force is acting this way, pulling away from this joint. That means that that member is under tension. And the force of the tension is 13, point, uh, 13 kilonewtons. Now, the, now that we have that, let's try to find the force on FDE. I can do that by putting my pivot point here, which will eliminate this force right there. So the next thing I'm going to do is put my pivot point right there and find all the moments about this point. I can then say that the sum of all the moments about point K must add up to zero. That is equal to, notice I don't have to worry about this force that goes right through here. I don't have to worry about this force, but I do have to worry about this one, this one, this one, this one, and that one unknown. All right. So the first three, notice that they're acting in this direction. This is counterclockwise. They're all positive. That would be one kilonewton force multiplied times a perpendicular distance. This would be one, two, three meters now times three meters plus a two kilonewton force times two meters plus a two kilonewton force times one meter. Oop, let me draw a line here so we don't get confused. Now I still have this force, which is a clockwise direction. That would be minus 5.25 kilonewtons multiplied times a distance of one, two, three meters as well. And finally, I have this force right here, FDE, which is a clockwise motion. That's minus FDE multiplied times this distance, which is a half a meter. Solving for FDE, FDE, notice that I moved this over to the other side, the equal sign makes that positive. FDE multiplied times 0 0.5 meters is equal to 3 kilonewton meters plus 4 kilonewton meters plus 2 kilonewton meters and this becomes minus 15.75 kilonewton meters and then dividing both sides by 0 0.5 meters 
I get the force DE is equal to, and let me get a calculator out, so I keep track of everything, that's 3, that's 7, that's 9, <clears throat> minus this, that's minus, uh, I, I can do it this way, minus 6.75 kilonewton meters, minus 6.75 kilonewton meters, divided by 0 0.5 meters, which is equal to minus 13.5 kilonewtons. That's a 12. Yep, that is correct. Now, notice I got a negative answer, which means that the direction of this force, FDE, is opposite of what the way it's drawn, that the actual force is in this direction, which means that this member here is under compression. It's also a fairly large force. Finally, I need to find FDK. Where should I put the pivot point to find FDK? Probably, I could do it here. If I do it there, then I eliminate this force, I eliminate that force, uh, or I could do it over here. It doesn't really matter. Let's do it here. All right, let's. So there's options. You don't have to pick any particular point, but let me pick this point right here. That's probably a good one. So what we're going to do is we're going to sum up all the moments about point L, and we're going to set those equal to zero. Notice by picking this as a pivot point, I can eliminate this force, I can eliminate this force. So starting with these two right here, this will give me a counterclockwise moment. That would be a positive one kilonewton. And again, let me draw a line here so we don't get confused. All right, one kilonewton times the distance here is one meter minus F at A, that's a 5.25 kilonewton, force multiply also times one meter. We've eliminated this one. Now this one gives us a clockwise moment that is positive, oh, that clockwise negative, minus two kilonewtons multiplied times one meter. I don't have to count for this one. I do have to count for FDE, which is also giving me a clockwise moment. That would be minus FDE, and minus FDE is 13.5 newtons. No, notice that this gets a little bit confusing. I'm going to take into account the direction, the actual direction of the force. The force is this way, because I know it's a force of compression, which means that the actual force gives me a counterclockwise moment. That's a positive. So I'm going to use a positive 13.5 kilonewtons. 13.5 kilonewtons and multiply that times the distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot point, which is a half a meter, 0 0.5 meters. I now believe I have all the forces. One, two, three, four, and now the one unknown is FDK. And it's drawn to give me a direction like this, which is clockwise, that's minus FDK. Let's say that it acts at the, through the point K, which is a distance of two meters away from the pivot point, two meters, but then I have to multiply it times this angle right here. If this angle here is theta, I have to multiply it times the cosine of theta. Now we need to find out what theta is equal to. We can say that the theta is equal to the arc tangent of the opposite side divided by the adjacent side, which is equal to the arc tangent of Relative to this angle, the opposite side here is one meter, and the adjacent side of the angle here is a half a meter. So it's the arc tangent of two, and let's try arc tangent of two is 63.43 degrees. 63.43 degrees, which is the number that's going to go in here. Plug that right in here. We're now ready to find FDK. When we take this and bring it to the other side, it becomes positive. FDK is equal to, in the numerator we get one kilonewton meter minus 5.25 kilonewton meter minus two kilonewton meter and plus 6.75 
kilonewton meter and all divided by this right here because when we move all that across we have to divide that by the coefficient which is two meters times the cosine of 63.43 degrees. Wow, it's a lot of work, but that's how it's done. Taking the cosine of that and multiplying times two. Take the inverse of that. And we're going to multiply the times what's remaining there. 6.75 minus five and a quarter, that's one and a half. Two and a half minus two, that would be 0 0.5 divided by that. So 0 0.5 kilonewton meter divided by 2 meters times the cosine of 63.43 degrees. So multiplying that times 0.5, I get 0 0.56 kilonewtons. Round it off. All right, and that's the final answer for the third member. You can see that's quite a bit of work. It takes a long time to do all three members like that, but there really is any better way except to go ahead, take the section, put off on the side, draw the direction of the three forces you're looking for, find the support forces by summing up all the moments about point A or about point I, depending upon which of the two you're trying to find, and then going ahead and put in the, taking the correct pivot point about which you can calculate the moments each case only taking one of the unknown, and that's how you then finally get the three forces. So the three forces, LK, 13 kilonewtons, 13 kilonewtons, that is under tension. The next one, that was force DE, we realized that was under compression, 13.5 kilonewtons, and the fi final force, the one that goes across like this is an angle, 0.56 kilonewtons, and it looks like that one is also under tension, and that's how it's done.